Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is game user settings, the hardware benchmark nodes. Transition over. We are actually going to cover three of the nodes in this video because they pretty much all work together. You really can't use any of them without each other because that's kind of silly. But let's cover basically what it does. Let me run my example. We'll hit play. We'll save this out. Pull it to full screen. The benchmark is basically a performance test that Epic has in the engine, and it allows you as the developer to do a quick little benchmark on the system and hopefully allow your player to have some optimized settings. So if I was to go to low, and let's set all my settings to low and hit apply, and here's all my low settings. My game's running as fast as possible. Everything's low. I have to do this at 100% too. Why not? There we go. When I hit auto detect, it's going to take a couple seconds. It's going to auto detect appropriate settings, and then it's going to go ahead and set them over here. Now you can see everything's set to Epic. Now I personally don't have it applying immediately. That's why um, you didn't see it change, but we're going to cover how it works and what we'd use it for and some really weird things that seem to happen with it. So let me go ahead and show you that. So we have the three nodes here, run hardware benchmark, set benchmark fallback values and apply hardware benchmark results. Now this one right here, I'm going to put at the bottom because I think it actually isn't even finished and I'll show you that. But these two run hardware benchmark and apply hardware benchmark are two primary nodes. Basically you get your game user settings. If you typed in hardware benchmark, you'd find the run and apply. And this is our default run values. This is going to run some tests. It's going to determine basically how well your game is going to run the engine. And then it's going to go ahead and spit back the results. And it's going to put them in both the scalability settings and in your game user settings. And that's kind of important. And then it's up to you if you want to apply them. If I was to, for example, uncheck this, all I'm doing is running the benchmark and we run it. Once I run it, well, nothing's going to happen. It's just simply going to run it, store the values, and then... Well, nothing. You haven't told it to do anything. So watch. Auto detect. And well, nothing happens. Auto detect again. Nothing happens. And yeah, unfortunately, my frame rate drops while I hit auto detect because it's pretty much taking all the resources out of the machine. After you run it, what it does is it determines the scalability settings for all of our scalability values. And by scalability values, I mean if we go to settings, scalability, remember we have view distance, anti-aliasing, shadows, textures, effects, foliage, and resolution scale. It's going to determine the appropriate values based on your machine, store them in the scalability settings option, which unfortunately in blueprints we can't access, but it's also going to apply them to your game user settings, and that's the important part. After we've run it, now we can choose what we want to do. We can either apply hardware benchmark results right here, or we can use our normal saving and loading and applying nodes. So for example, we could have the apply settings node here and we could run this and it's gonna apply them from the game user settings. Recommendations, it's personal preference. I personally have no issues using the normal apply settings. However, the apply benchmark results options are here if you simply don't want to adjust your normal settings, if you just want to apply them based on the scalability value. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I was to do this right here, we're going to run it and then apply it. We should see after I run this, the changes come into effect for the scalability settings. We're going to run this and we will, let's drop this down below. We'll hit apply. We'll auto detect. And now, as you can see, the graphics changed. None of my settings here on the screen changed, my Epic and my labels, because that's a completely separate process. But the graphics in the background physically changed to the more advanced settings. If I go to my settings in here and go to settings, engine scalability, well, you notice they're still all at low. When you do just the apply hardware benchmark results, what it's doing, and I see if I can find the actual file. 
hate finding the stupid file. Let's see. Settings, Windows, no editor. Engine. Did config. No, I haven't run this one yet. Let me, let me run this to show you. Let's see what happens. I have no idea what's about to happen. It might screw up the stream. Hopefully not. Okay, so good. We're closed. That's an older setting of the project, but I need to show you. Here we go. I need to show you this right here. Game user settings. So right here is the scalability groups. This is a completely separate section inside of your INI file that contains the scalability settings. The scalability settings right here, resolution, quality, view, distance, these, you know, nine options. I can't count. Eight. Let's go with eight. That sounds good are what is changed when you use this node. These options down here, all of these ones, are what happens when you use the normal apply settings node. Here, let me drag that back after I delete it, of course. Here we go, apply settings node. So while they accomplish the same thing, they are different. So if we were to use only the apply hardware benchmarks results node, the next time we run the game, it's not going to have those changes saved because it only change only changes it only saved them here under scalability and only when we're working with the benchmark results or reloading scalability settings is it actually going to come into play the normal settings here down here are saved resolutions and other settings are what happens when we apply the normal node so that's something to keep in mind why do i mention this well let's say you want to run the hardware benchmark and let's say your player doesn't like the results. Well, if you go ahead and just do nothing and cancel out or revert to your last settings, you're not actually saving anything into the file itself. So therefore, if something crashes, the next time they load it up, those bad settings from the benchmark aren't actually gonna do anything. They're just there temporarily. Personal recommendation would be to run the benchmark. If everything runs good, and it doesn't seem like it crashed during the benchmark itself, apply the benchmark settings. Then see if the player wants to keep them. If the player wants to keep them, then go ahead and save to the actual INI file so that way the next time they want to use it, it runs fine. So something like this would be recommended personally. And that's not targeting, duh. So let's look at our other nodes, which I apparently deleted. Oh, I moved over there. So let's look at the values. And then this other note. Now, let's look at the other note because this is a stupid note. It says set benchmark val fallback values. And you'd figure, okay, well, it's well, it says set scalability settings to sensible fallback values for use when the benchmark fails or potentially caused a crash. Good. Sounds like a good note. However, for whatever reason, if we look at it inside the actual source code itself and we look at the fallback, let's see, it's under scalability, right? Here we go. We look at what it does. All it does is change the resolution quality to 100. That's it. I don't know if they forgot to finish it or if it's supposed to do something else, but all it tends, seems to do is set the resolution quality to 100 and nothing else. So in terms of this note itself, I haven't found a use for it, but it's supposed to be useful. Now in terms of actual input options here, see this one that says work scale? I wouldn't mess with it. I messed with it, it causes bad things to happen. Basically, this is how much it's going to test your machine. The default value here is 10, and then you have one and one for the multiplier. If you adjust the work scale, let me show you what happens. Let's hit play, let's save. We'll run the default benchmark. Watch how long either my stream stutters or how long it takes for the actual auto detection to go into play. Let me apply. Everything's in low quality. I hit auto detect and then it worked. So yeah, a second or two on this machine. If I change the multiplier to something like 25 and we'll go ahead and hit play. We'll test out 25. Now watch how much more time it takes in order to test. Let's go ahead and set our settings back to low. Apply, auto detect. And there you go. And you noticed it took longer. It's, I want to say roughly, on this machine itself, uh, um, 10 is equal to a second. 2.5 would be equal to 2.5 seconds. I tried it with a 1,000. I wouldn't recommend it. Your machine pretty much is unusable while it's doing it.
the default value is good. It's a good way of testing the machine. What matters here is the CPU and the GPU multiplier. How this works in terms of the benchmark, let's pull up the code and figure out where I put it. I think it was is this one. You know, I should probably actually hit control F here. Let's see. Benchmark. Let's see. Here we go. Benchmark quality. So how it works is it runs the benchmark on the work scale. Once it's done, it gets back the result and then multiplies the result by the CPU and the GPU multiplier. Then based on the result, the higher number, the better, it sets your different quality levels. So by default, whatever the quality comes out is what it's going to get in because you have a CPU multiplier of one. However, if you want, maybe you're finding that your benchmark results on your test machines are coming back a little bit too lenient. You want your users to have a more powerful machine to run at the settings you're running on. Adjust your CPU multiplier down. So you'll notice when I ran my example with the default settings, we have Epic for my quality settings. I'm running a decent enough machine where it auto detects everything at Epic. We'll set everything to low. We'll hit apply. We'll auto detect and everything switches over to, well, everything should switch over to Epic, but unfortunately it didn't because I'm recording it causes an issue. Sometimes it runs Epic, sometimes it won't. I haven't figured out that out yet. Yeah, let's try out Detect again. Okay, so it goes on that far right side. Let's just say it's close enough. If we change our multiplier down, let's say to something like 0.1, because why not? And we hit play again. We're going to get tenth of our value back. Because we're only going to get a tenth of our value back, we're going to need an insanely powerful machine to give us good settings. So let's change everything to low and hit apply. Now we'll hit auto detect. And you'll notice I now have low for half my settings and medium for the other half. So that's just something to keep in mind. Default values are going to be fine. You'll probably get good values. But, you know, let's say you have a game that kind of is really funky and it's... You kind of want to future-proof it a little bit more, then adjust your CPU multiplier down a little bit. Let's say you're running a nice beefy Titan X machine, and you want to go ahead and you know you're just you're not safe having it auto detect super high. Adjust your multiplier down a little bit. You'll be good to go. Okay, so long video, highly annoying nodes, but anyways, to summarize and wrap this up. The hardware benchmark is an easy way to populate the scalability quality settings. Those were these settings we saw here based on the performance of the machine. And it works fairly well. I ran this on a Pentium quad core machine with a GT730 video card and it, it did not like it. It put it on low and like 30% scalability, but that's because it runs at like 10 frames per second. That's good. It's supposed to, it worked exactly like it's supposed to. It's a nice, easy way to implement a button so your users can have a nice auto setup for the game. It's also nice, just run it on first startup. It's going to give you back your results, apply them temporarily using the hardware benchmark results node, or apply them permanently using the apply settings node. Your multipliers, remember, the higher the multiplier, the easier it will be to get high settings. The lower the multiplier, the harder it will be because it's a multiplier. So lower number, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, or whatever, is going to make it harder to meet, reach those epic settings. Work scale, I'd keep it at 10. Feel free to adjust it up higher, and you'll end up locking your machine up. And that's it.